Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here and I am the Audiophiliac. What use are measurements in audio reviews? I really, I'm, I am troubled by the whole measurement phenomenon because there's a thing that you might assume that measurements provide some sort of objectivity in a review, that the product that measures well is therefore a good product. And maybe yes, maybe no. Now I assume, before we go any further, I want to state right up front here that measurements are useful tools for engineers in the design process. Absolutely, positively, I have no quarrel with measurements for, as a tool by trained engineers. But measurements in magazines and websites of headphones or amplifiers or speakers or anything, I have a problem with that because first of all, uh, they can be hugely misleading to consumers. That if product A measures well or is, measures better than product B, that therefore you would like product A more than product B, that's just not true. So there's this false security that the, review, that the, that the measurement will lead you to the better product. That is just not true. People like things that measure worse. I mean, it's, I go to the, back to my analog versus digital. Uh, digital measures in almost every single way better than a, the sound of an LP, and yet many, many, many audiophiles prefer the sound of vinyl. So better measuring anything doesn't ensure uh, user satisfaction. It's just not the way it works. But here's the thing about measurements, even by engineers. So Andrew Jones, uh, now of uh, ELAC America, but formerly of TAD and way back when worked for KEF, he told me when he worked for KEF that he didn't design speakers for KEF, he measured speakers for KEF. And in the five, I think he said he was there five years. For the five years he was there, he measured speakers, KEF speakers and other brands of speakers, and he learned to correlate measurements with sound quality. Because uh, that's pretty much all he did there. I think that's the way I remember the story. And the point of the story is, is that he came to realize that when he measured a speaker and it didn't measure the way he thought it would, he would question the way he measured the speaker. Now, of course, the, the, the first conclusion may have been right, that there was a problem there that the measurements caught. But it was also possible that the measurements were just done incorrectly for that specific circumstance and led to an incorrect conclusion. And that is the point, that the conclusions are subjective. Yes, subject, uh, measurements have to be evaluated by human beings who see certain things and make certain assumptions about what those measurements mean, and that's the point. Those are trained engineers that can make those assumptions, but when consumers or reviewers who are not really engineers make assumptions about what measurements mean and how they correlate to sound quality, mm, that's a big black hole. So, you know, it's that thing. Sometimes certain reviewers measure first and then listen, and those, and those measurements definitely color the way they, they conclude how something sounds. It seems like sort of an obvious that you should listen first, draw conclusions, and then measure to see if you miss something. But not measure and then say, oh, I hear that little bump at 50 hertz. And no, 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 no. That's, that's again, highly misleading. So anyway, I think I've beaten this horse to death. So I'd like to hear your guy, you guys' uh, impressions of measurements and how useful they are or not of uh, audio equipment, speakers, amplifiers, electronics, stacks, you name it, whatever. Anyway, leave comments, please. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, share the video, like it, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, hope to see you again back here very soon.